And oftentimes people, uh, or not people, but parents may use that as a scare tactic. Like, oh, when you get to the dentist, they're going to give you a shot. Mm -hmm. And they're going to pull out all of your teeth if you don't go brush them. It's like, don't tell them that because that's going to make my job a little bit harder. What's up, everybody? Thanks for joining us for another episode of the Black Student Success Podcast, where we bring you insight and guidance from successful Black professionals and students. My name is Selvin, and as always, we appreciate the support. So we've got Brandon Goodlow back on the podcast. He's going to talk about a day in the life of his shoes um, as a pediatric dentist. Um, So he's going to give us an insight of what it's actually like to kind of go through his day, go through his week, Um, any things that you might not be aware of, you know, um, while walking in his shoes. Um, And he's going to kind of get into detail of that. So welcome back, Brandon. How you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? Good, good, good. Thank you. Thank you. So um, yeah, so one, I'll give you an opportunity to just kind of um, introduce yourself, um, what you do, and then we'll kind of, you know, you can start off by talking uh, about kind of, you know, what, uh, what in the day of life, um, you know, uh, looks like for you. Okay. Well, hello, everyone. I am Dr. Brandon Goodlow. I am a board eligible pediatric dentist right now, still awaiting my board certification results that should be coming soon. So fingers crossed for that. I'll be board eligible in the country. Um, So I'm I'm definitely excited about that. Um, So you said what is in the life of a pediatric dentist. So Literally every morning you get up, you say your prayers, right? Brush your teeth, eat breakfast, all of that good stuff. Um, so I, first thing I do uh, when I get to the office in the morning is um, I review my schedule again. I usually always review the schedule um, the day before. Um, and then I go back in and review it one more time just to make sure that I kind of know what I what I have set for the day, what type of procedures I'm doing. Um, if my patients have any type of medical conditions that I need to be aware of. Um, things, things like that, um, and how to properly manage that and prepare to manage those, those types of things. Um, pediatric dentistry, um, for me, another one of the reasons why I kind of chose to go into peds outside of being inspired by my mentor, um, as we spoke about last time is, um, I, I want to be the, the first line that children meet when they first go to the dentist to, help alleviate that fear or that anxiety about going. Um, Oftentimes people you always hear say, um, I hate the dentist. Um, I don't like going. Everything hurts. It's so scary. And it's this and it's that. And really and truly that's, that's not quite true. Oftentimes um, when people come to see us, it's usually when something has gotten to the point that it's so bad, but could have been prevented. Um, So I often share with my parents, especially during my, my early childhood visits or, you know, a, a child's first dental visit, um, is that if you come for preventative measures and just keep up with your six-month routine cleaning, you can avoid all of the the, the pain and the, the discomfort and the anxiety and, you know, all of those types of things. Um, and once you truly get time to kind of educate the parents and the child, um, and they start to kind of to see those things that kind of helps to make the appointments go a, a lot smoother and a lot easier. Um, so, as you know, children <laughs> um, can be a handful sometimes, but they they are a joy for me, honestly, to work with. Um, it's it's the adults <laughs> mm. for me that that act like kids in the dental chair that I'm just like, OK, look. This is too much for me. So I leave that to the general dentist. Um, but I expect the child to be a child, you know. Um, but is there anything that you want to know more specifically or do you just want me to just kind of do a full rundown? Yeah. Um, yeah. Go through like a, just like, a, you know, so after you kind of reviewed the schedule, um, you know, what that day looks like. Because like, let's say for me, for example, um, mm-hmm. you know, I I might see, you know, the, the dentist kind of in and out of the room. Um, I don't know what they're right. doing outside, you know, um, of, you know, kind of checking in on, you know, how my x-rays look or, um, right. or, or kind of, you know, after the, the assistants have done the, the cleaning or whatever the case is. So, uh, you know, what happens, you know, when, when the dentist is not actually in the room, you know, give, uh, give our listeners a little bit of an idea of kind of what you're doing. Yeah, at yeah. The time. So oftentimes um, we'll go in, we'll, we'll do like a quick assessment um, and then we'll instruct our, our um, dental assistants like, Hey, you know, I'm going to prescribe 
these x-rays. Um, typically for a child, um, I'll prescribe like two bite wing x-rays, which is when we put the little sensor in the mouth and take the side view pictures of the teeth. Um, or I'll prescribe like a Panorex, which is the machine where you just bite your front teeth in and it spins all the way around your head. And, you know, and I try to cut off the lights and let the, the machine play a little sound or a song, like little elevator music for the kids. Um, the machine that we have at work actually turns green. So mm. kids are kind of excited to be in a dark room and see, you know, a big spinning green light in there. Um, which, you know, we try, especially in pediatrics, we try to make everything fun and very child friendly, even with the terminology that we use. So after they take their x-rays, you know, I'll walk back into the room. I'll read the x-rays, kind of see what's going on. Um, if there's any cavities or anything like that, you know, we'll diagnose it, chart it, and then we'll get, you know, the child set up um, for their appointment to have those filled or capped or whatever. Um, but in addition to that, um, my biggest philosophy is, especially now um, being in private practice, is to um, take the time to educate the parents. Um, about ways to prevent the cavities, oral hygiene instructions, you know, proper ways to brush and floss and, you know, things like that. Oftentimes, I will say people in general, not even just kids, we don't like to floss or we don't like to brush because I hear a lot of times it hurts. And that's just because of the technique. Uh, we're doing it wrong. So I'll take that extra time to show them how to properly do it so that, you know, we can start building up these, these better habits and better oral habits and ultimately life habits, to, to be quite honest. Um, so after I go through my whole spiel about the education piece and kind of explaining to them what a cavity is, how it starts, how to prevent it, how it works out, you know, things like that, um, I explain to them the treatments. Um, I know sometimes um, we have a lot of parents who go to like WebMD and, you know, all of these things and they're looking up stuff and it's like, you know, is this safe? Is this not safe? And, you know, and I, I don't mind answering those types of questions because I think it's important for people to know, you know. Um, so we'll answer all of their questions, any questions that they may have. I'll even do like a quick demo of the procedure, where, whether it's showing like models of what I'm going to do or, you know, I'll just kind of let them hear different sounds or play with like a little bit of the dental materials or things like that just to get the child and the parents to become more comfortable with me as the provider, but then also to not be afraid of the procedure at hand. Um, so when it comes time to us, let's say like our hand piece, everybody wants to call it a drill. I don't call it a drill. I call it a hand piece. But to the kids, I'll call it, oh, this is my little whistle or, you know, my slow speed hand piece. Oh, this is Mr. Bumby. And it's going to sound like a little motorcycle or something like that. Um, then when it comes to like me using some of the materials for a filling, I'll say, oh, this is my tooth shampoo and it's going to be a little sour and we're going to use this to wipe off the tooth, you know, to wash the tooth off after we, you know, use the whistle to remove all of the cavities and wash them away. Right. Um, even when I'm administering like local anesthesia, I'll tell them, oh, we're going to drop some sleepy juice. We don't use the word shot, <laughs> you know, because mm -hmm. that's just not what we do because people hear that. And oftentimes people uh, or not people, but parents may use that as a scare tactic. Like, oh, when you get to the dentist, they're going to give you a shot mm -hmm. and they're going to pull out all of your teeth if you don't go brush them. It's like, don't tell them that because that's going to make my job a little bit harder. Yeah. You know? <laughs> but then I come in and I'll tell the parents right away, like, no, 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 no. We don't have shots here. We, we don't we don't use needles. We don't use any of that. And, you know, I have different distraction techniques and, you know, we have different techniques that we call like tell, show, do. Um, you tell the child what it is, you show them what it is, and then you actually do it. Um, and it helps to kind of just ease them into the process. Um, even when it comes to like the nitrous oxide gas, the little laughing gas, that's what we tell them. Oh, I have some silly gas and I just want you to breathe in the bubbles and it's going to make you feel kind of silly. You may laugh, you may feel like you're floating or your fingers may tingle, you know. So we just make it very fun in a sense. It was fun as can be anyway. Um, just to kind of alleviate that fear. So after we do that, um, you know, we'll get them set up for their appointment. They'll leave and then I'm moving on to the next patient. Um, <clears throat> oftentimes I may have multiple patients in, you know, a room at a time with different dental assistants and I'll pretty much just kind of do the same thing. It's a little routine at times, but what makes it fun is you never know what the kids are going to ask or what they're going to tell you during the appointments. Cause I've heard some pretty wild stories that I won't go into <laughs> details on here. Um, 
but you know ultimately it's i just i like the fact that i get to be a big kid at work basically i get to watch cartoons all day i get to wear comfortable scrubs and i get to let my personality shine and, and laugh and joke with kids all day and then at the end of the day if we had a hard appointment i give out toys or maybe a sugar-free lollipop or something um if they had a two quarter or something like that and then you know they give me a high five or give me a big hug and tell me thank you for, you know, not making a goal for taking care of them and keeping them from being sick because their tooth was sick. And it makes it all rewarding, even when you have a, you know, a difficult appointment at times. Um, and then oftentimes I get a lot of encouragement from families um, because they had, you know, horrible experiences when they were kids mm. and they're happy that their child has had a much more pleasant experience at such a young age. Um, and then another thing that is very rewarding that most people don't <clears throat> really see um, or sometimes even think about is to see a child or to hear a child tell you, oh, you look just like me. Mm. So that means that I can do what you do, too. Because there's not that many of us, um, especially black males in pediatric dentistry. It's it's very few. Um, African Americans in pediatric dentistry in general is already slim. So yeah. I'm truly a dinosaur in this in this particular industry. Um, and it's 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 a challenge that I accept and it's it's very rewarding. Um, but yeah, and then from there, you know, we just literally just kind of go back chair to chair and just have sorry, my puppy is like trying to jump up um but yeah so um literally it's just pediatrics is it's mostly about preventative care that's 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 one of our our biggest things that we promote and that we push um because we don't like when we have to see a child who has a big abscess um and then of course it's going to be a little bit more difficult because they're already afraid the tooth is hurting really bad then we got to go through all of this spiel of trying to get them numb to fight the infection and you know kids already don't like to take medicine so if we have to prescribe an antibiotic they don't want to take it so the infection just spreads and we try at all costs to keep them from going to the ER um sometimes unfortunately we might have to get down and dirty with it just to make sure that this child does not end up in the hospital sick um, if we can remove the source of infection. And then other times, you know, we get to, like I said, just promote prevention and, you know, just, just try to keep the kids as healthy as possible. Yeah. And that's no. pretty much the, the, the ends out of it for the yeah. most part. I mean, we have other interesting things too. And I think most people don't know that pediatric dentists are also the special needs doctors. Um, I haven't seen as many special needs patients since I've been on private practice but in residency, um, that was one of my, I can say probably one of my highlights. Um, I've worked with a lot of children um, that have been on the autism uh, spectrum, spectrum disorders um, or on the spectrum, as we say. Um, I've worked with kids um, or, and or adults, um, too, because, you know, they still qualify under our realm um, who have had Down syndrome. Um, I've had a patient who's had Tourette's. Um, you know, all different types of, of things. So we we definitely learn a lot about um, syndromes and disorders and things of that nature and how to manage them properly. And, you know, we're on the cleft lip, cleft palate teams um, where we help to manage that. Um, in addition to um, not only just being a, a dentist in office or a provider in office, we also um, apply for hospital privileges. Um, to go and put children to sleep under general anesthesia to do full mouth rehabilitation and or, um, you know, the special needs patients as well. Um, and that oftentimes, especially for young kids who just can't cope with, you know, receiving, you know, 10, 12, 13, 14 fillings at a time in a chair instead of trying to, you know, get through multiple difficult appointments just to get them back to a healthy state. We'll just take them to the hospital. We'll have a full anesthesia team, put them to sleep, and we'll just fix everything at the same time. Mm. Um, and then we also offer things like oral conscious sedations, IV sedations, things of that nature, um, so just so that we can provide a full service for, for these kids to make sure that they're they're staying healthy. 
Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, um, it's, uh, it's a very, very detailed as far as, you know, kind of what you go into and the, and the methods that you go about it, because, you know, you would, you don't hear, you know, uh, you know, methods like that, obviously, you know, for, uh, at, a, at a dentist office for adults. So it was actually kind of insightful, you know, um, you know, to hear what, you know, what you would do, um, specifically for kids. Um, yeah. and I think, um, it's so one thing that I think it, that it brings is that you, it puts you in a, in a position of influence. So like you mentioned, you know, if, um, you know, seeing a, a black male dentist, I think that's, you know, mm-hmm. um, you know, that's, that's just kind of powerful in itself. Um, but also for the fact that if you're starting off these kids who are, you know, at, you know, at this point, very impressionable and you're giving them a very fun experience at the dentist, what could that lead to, you know, when they actually, you know, grow up, um, you know, they'll continue to enjoy it or they'll, you know, you're, you're alleviating the fear. Um, and then if they are getting into the practice of, you know, you know, you know, good dental hygiene, then they're, um, you know, bound to have those good experiences when they grow up, which might be a little bit more difficult to, uh, you know, to, uh, to, to get to, um, so, um, so that's, that's actually really, that's really cool that you're actually going through it. Um, one question I did have when it comes to like the different techniques that you're using to kind of make kids and families feel comfortable, do you mm-hmm. learn that in, do you learn that in medical school or do you learn that at particular practices or, um, how is that, how is that <laughs> shaped? Cause I know that you've worked at least more than one place before. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, pretty much with that, I, so I'm trying to think of the best way to answer that question. So yes, ultimately. Um, but to me, it's also one of those, one of those skills that either you have it or you don't. Mm. It can be taught, but there are definitely, you can definitely tell a difference in a person who has only been taught those particular skills versus someone who actually has just a natural ability to be able to connect with children mm. and to, you know, to just kind of let your personality shine because you're, you're taught the basic skills. Yes. I learned about it first in, in dental school. Um, and then after that, of course, you know, we really learn about it in residency and we put them into practice on a daily basis because I'm not dealing with adults anymore. I'm, I'm dealing with children unless they have special needs. Um, so yeah, we're, we're, we have a whole literally handbook, um, the handbook of pediatric dentistry. We have guidelines that we follow on how to handle certain things, certain treatments, et cetera. So um, one thing about pediatric dentistry is that it is very organized. Um, and with my personality, that, 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 really works well for me. Um, I think we probably have the most organized um, academy as compared to all of the specialties um, because we literally have a new reference manual or guideline book that comes out every single year Mm -hmm. with updates. And we're constantly keeping up with research and the best preventive measures for children as things are evolving and changing and and new materials are coming out, um, which is awesome. So Literally, um, even in the handbooks, they tell you, oh, okay, no, this is the definition of tell, show, do. This is how you run through it. This is how you do it. Um, We'll practice it where we're tested on it, even just so that you're staying up to date with, you know, these different techniques and tricks and things like that. But again, oftentimes, most pediatric dentists um, were usually pretty happy we're very happy. We're very goofy. We're very fun. We're very loving. Um, I found one thing that works for me best is for the initial appointments. Um, I don't mind if parents are in the room with me just so that they can kind of see how I work, how I am with the child and how the child responds to me. Mm-hmm. And then if there are any subsequent appointments after that for like restorative needs, then I try to tell the parents, OK, you know, you kind of see how the relationship is here it's okay for you to wait out in the lobby and we'll be done in 20 minutes, you know? So, um, because oftentimes some kids respond better when the parents aren't in the room, some kids respond. Okay. When the parents aren't in the room. So it just kind of depends. Um, so we, we literally learn so many different things and we have to be able to adapt and kind of switch, um, in between all of those things, because, We'll be leaving the room after having, you know, this like a difficult appointment with the child. And we have to kind of coach them through and, you know, ultimately just kind of get the work done. Um, 
But then on the other end, I have another child over here that's already a little anxious and kind of scared because this is their first appointment. And, you know, you may be a little frustrated from leaving that one appointment, but you have to instantly switch and go back to being very happy and, you know, jolly and all of that stuff so that you can make sure that that child has a pleasant experience. Um, one of the main goals of pediatric dentistry is to just protect the child's psyche um, mm -hmm. and to alleviate that fear and, again, promote, promote preventative as much as possible um, so that we can keep these kids healthy because um, dental caries is one of the most chronic illnesses that are affecting the um, pediatric population in this country. Um, actually, I think it is the number one um, chronic illness that um, kids are facing um, is cavities. So, and we, we, we are the only, well, the dental profession, I would say is the only profession that I can think of that actively works towards putting themselves out of business. If that makes sense. Mm, yeah. That, Cause that. we're, <laughs> we're trying to stop the cavities and, and fill the cavities and take care of the teeth to promote healthy habits. But, you know, and we're actively working towards that, but, we're also still very employed and very necessary because, you know, we, somebody has to be here to kind of manage it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, that, that's a, that's an interesting way to put it. Uh, trying to put yourself yeah. out of business. That's, that's funny. Yeah. Um, no, but that that's a there's a there's a lot to that that you um that you have to do. You have, you know, obviously have to be technically skilled and um you know you have to have those, you know, um, not only people skills, but working with kids, like you said, you either have it or you yeah. don't. And you know, because we've always, you know, um we've all probably have interacted with at least one doctor who might not have been as, you know, um genuine as open <laughs> or whatever yeah. the case is. Um that doesn't take away from how you know knowledgeable and skillful they are, but to right. have that extra thing, um, especially Especially, um, you know, when uh, someone's going into a place that might just kind of, you know, bring up some type of anxiety, um, it's great right. to have that 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 skill to be able to pick up on that and then be able to try to shut that down or start to alleviate it as soon as you see it, even probably before the the appointment begins. So, um, right. so there's a lot that you're 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 kind of managing. I'm sure that you're also. Or it's easy to to have that very um very um uh, happy environment, you know, not only with you know you, but also like the dental assistants, everybody who's working in the office, and kind of working right. together to again, you know, make make sure that the the, the kids are okay. So that that's also right, negative. exactly. And it and it literally starts from the very first time that that parent calls on the phone. Um, you you need to be able to tell that even the person working in the front. Is, is happy. This is this is a happy office. It's a happy space. Um, there's really good vibes here. So, you know, if you make the parents feel comfortable on the phone and then when you get them in, that has to translate again because you want them mm -hmm. to know that we're here to take care of your child. We're here to make sure that, you know, your child is going to get the best possible care um, in a fun and safe environment that is very child friendly. And, you know, you have to come in with smiles every day. Even if you're having a bad day, you got to fake it till you make it because mm. you ultimately we have to protect these children and their psyche. And, you know, we have to make them not afraid um, so that we can even just get to the point where I can go in and count their teeth for them. <laughs> I've, I've had plenty of kids that have screamed, but clenched their teeth together. And I'm like, how is this even possible? Um but then, you know, you joke around with them and then finally you're able to kind of coax them and, and coach them through the appointment. Um, so literally we have so many tricks up our sleeves and, you know, we just kind of work with the child and at their pace, because the last thing I want to do is traumatize a kid and have them afraid to go forever. So. Yeah. There you go. Well, yeah. well, great work that you're doing, you know, so, so, you know, continue that and continue, you know, striving to, you know, whatever personal goals that you have, and then, you know, just, you know, making sure that these kids are safe. So, so thanks again. And, you know, thanks for, for, for sharing your, your story, your perspective. Um, any last words for our audience? Um, just, just keep going, keep pushing and you can, if you can dream it, you can achieve it. So there whatever you it is, dreaming, just, just go after it. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, again, thanks, Brandon. Thanks for, for uh, you know, sharing your time and everything. And thanks to everybody who's been watching and listening. Uh, feel free to follow us on Instagram and Facebook. That's at Inquire Hire. Inquirehire.com is our website. And then you can contact us by email. That's contact at Inquirehire.com. Uh, feel free to reach out in case you have any questions um, about anything that Brandon has talked about, uh, whether in this or the other episode, uh, we will definitely be able to get back to you. So until next time, take care. Thank you.